Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a video where we talk about a fantastic technique you can use to learn any material through school or through university. I personally used this when I was going through medical school and I know that a lot of my friends who have gone on to become great doctors also use this technique. This technique will not only benefit you when it comes to sitting your exams, it has also been proven that this technique will help you retain the information long term for your careers. If you're new to this channel, my name is Brian. I am a junior doctor working in London. I studied medicine at the University of Cambridge and at Imperial College in London, where I also obtained my PhD in cardiology. During my time at university, I've also been a university lecturer, given tutorials and also supervised projects. Over the last couple of years, I have also written papers and given talks about medical education and how to do well at university. I'm also very grateful that due to the work that I've done and my contributions to medical education, I've also been given awards by the Higher Education Academy and the Academy of Medical Educators. I'd therefore like to think that I am in a very good position to talk about how to do well at university and how to do well at medical school. There's no denying that at medical school, it's expected that medical students learn a ton of information. Not only is there a lot of content, but the content itself is always so varied. This varies all the way from the basic anatomy and biochemistry, all the way to the clinical aspects of clinical procedures and how to do physical examinations. The challenge for medical students is not only the need to learn all of this content, but to be able to recall this much, much later on. The anatomy that you learn in the first or second year of medical school then forms the fundamental basis for when you're treating a potential stroke patient in A&E as a foundation year doctor half a dozen years later. So today we're going to talk about one of the most popular and well studied forms of revision and studying. This is spaced repetition. Back in the late 1800s, a German called Hermann Ebbinghaus identified that without reviewing information that you had just learned, you will remember almost nothing and be able to recall almost nothing by the sixth day. There is a gradual drop off of recall and he called this the forgetting curve. Since then there has been a lot of research about why we forget things and techniques for which we can remember things for longer. One of the most well studied and most successful ways of remembering information is something called spaced repetition. The first thing I want to talk about is what is spaced repetition. To talk about the first major aspect I'll use the example of flashcards. Everyone or most people that are watching this video will have either used flashcards or know someone who has. The basis of using flashcards is very simple. You write down the information that you want to learn on a card and you review these cards regularly. If you're at school or university, then you've probably used these flashcards in a question and answer sort of format, where you have the question on one side and then the answers on the other. When you then review these flashcards, you actively recall the answers. You may have already noticed in the past that actively recalling these answers is a much more effective way of learning than reading the relevant sections in your textbook or your notes. The use of flashcards has been around for many years and they are a fantastic tool for revision. However, there is one element that they are lacking in. Flashcards are generally not very efficient when you want to learn and recall something in the long term. When you add spaced repetition into the use of flashcards, then they become a tool that's much, much more powerful. The concept of spaced repetition is very simply that you increase the period of time in between when you review information. For people who cram for their exams, this is a very different concept. In fact, it's actually the complete opposite. For example, whereas someone who's cramming for their exams would look at flashcards three or even four times a day for the week leading up to their exam, with spaced repetition, you would review the information once and then the next day, and then perhaps three days after that, and then a week after that, potentially then two weeks, and then a month after that. So then gradually over time, the period in between when you are reviewing the information gets longer and longer and longer. That's the general gist of spaced repetition. The reason that spaced repetition works so well is that it utilizes the way that the brain remembers and forgets information. 
Herman Ebbinghaus identified that the more time that passes since you last accessed some information, the more likely you are to forget it. The reason that the spacing works is that it utilizes the fact that your chances of forgetting information is affected by how often you recall that information. For example, if I was to give you a fact about human anatomy, you may forget it after three days. However, if I was to then ask you to actively recall that information tomorrow, you're more likely to remember it for up to a week. And then if I ask you to recall that information three days later, a week after that, two weeks after that, and even a month after that, you're much more likely to remember that information for an even longer period of time. So in summary, the more times you recall information, the longer it will stick in your brain. So space repetition works by giving you access to that information just as you are about to forget it. Then over time, as you recall the information over longer and longer periods of time, it's more likely that that information will remain stuck in your long-term memory. So what are the benefits of space repetition and how can it help you? Space repetition allows more effective learning and better retention of information. It also helps the information stay within your long-term memory. This means that you're much more likely to remember the information years in the future. It should also hopefully mean that you can recall more information whilst making actually less effort. This is because space repetition doesn't require you to look at the same information day after day after day. As you're increasing the period of time in between which you are recalling a bit of information, you can then be recalling other bits of information in between these periods and as the period of time gets wider you can fit more recall in between them as well. Basically meaning that you can study more things over the same period of time. Now I'm going to talk about how you can use space repetition. Firstly you can do this manually by using flashcards. The first step is setting up five boxes and labeling them one to five. Put all of the flashcards into box one. Review the information on that card and if you are successful in reviewing it, then you can move it on to the next box. If you are unable to review the information, then you have to send it back one box, for example, from box three back to box two. The boxes then determine how often you try to recall the information. For example, you can say that for everything in box one, you review this daily, box two, you review every three days, box three, every week, box four every two weeks and box five every month. The good thing about active recall is that you can adjust it depending on the time frame you have to revise. So that example of how often you review things is useful if you are reviewing things over the space of a year. If you are really tight for time and you are revising for an exam that you have in two months, then obviously the spacing in between the different boxes can be reduced. So box one, you still review every day. And then on the other side, box five, you review every week. And then just adjust boxes two, three, and four accordingly in between the period of a day and a week. An alternative way to manually making flashcards and one that is becoming much more popular, one that I now utilize, is using an online platform. In the UK, a lot of students use Anki, which is available on laptops. An alternative platform is using Brainscape, which also has a free app that you can download on a phone or a tablet. I used Brainscape a lot when I was learning anatomy and biochemistry. Having the app on my phone made it very easy to revise when I was commuting, when I was in between sets at the gym, and also when I was in hospital when I had some downtime in between clinics. When I started using apps for making flashcards, I found that this was much more effective. I'm typically much quicker at typing things than handwriting things. It was also much easier to have them all on a virtual platform rather than having physical flashcards clogging up my desk. Having such easy access to all the flashcards meant that I could make the space of repetition much more tailored to my needs as well. So that's space repetition. I get asked by a lot of students how they should revise at medical school, about how I revised at medical school, and space repetition is one of the best and most proven ways of revising through university. I know that a lot of people cram for exams, but unfortunately this is one of the worst ways for revising. 
especially if you are studying something like medicine where you're going to need to know the information for years and years by cramming you are going to forget the information very very quickly even if you only have one session before an exam you can still use spaced repetition try to just shorten the spacing in between when you're trying to recall the information shorten it from days and weeks to minutes and hours so do remember that your medical knowledge is not just for your exams of course passing your exams is very important but if you can utilize good learning techniques such as spaced repetition, not only will you do well in your exams, it will make you much more prepared for your future career. Okay, I know that I've harped on in this video about spaced repetition. There are other types of learning techniques which can be very effective. I'll talk about these other styles in my future videos. If this is something that interests you, then do feel free to subscribe to this channel. If you have any comments or any questions, then please put them in the comment section below. Finally, thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. I hope to see you next time.